Hi everyone, it's Warren here from Over Exposed 360. In today's video, I'll be running through my workflow and the issues I'm coming across with using the Samsung G360. I'll run through how I extract the raw footage from the camera, be it a video or photo, um, how I get it stitched, and all this while I'm working in a mainly Mac OS environment. So hopefully, this will be of some help for some of you watching. Firstly, let me say this. I'm still not 100% with my current workflow. So if you've got a better way of doing some of the things that you've seen in this video or you've got a, a suggestion that you want me to try out or you have tried out that, that is much better, please comment or DM me or let me know somehow, some way, and I'll be more than happy to improve on my process. So here's the situation. The Samsung Q360 photos and videos can only be stitched together using the Samsung Action Director software, which is exclusively available on PC Windows only. So if you're running a Mac OS environment like I am, or any other environment at the moment which is not Windows based, the, the footage that you get out from camera is pretty much useless. This may change going forward, as Samsung may decide to support other platforms, or one of the third party software such as Color or Autopano may offer 360 stitching templates that will be catering for the G360. So let's talk about the Samsung Action Director software quickly. It's based on the Cyberlink PowerDirector editing suite. I have not used this video editor before, but I'm not really interested in the Samsung Action Director for its editing capabilities. So for the purpose of this video, I'm purely using it and testing it for its stitching capabilities. So with that in mind, I have got my hands on a 2015 i5 Windows 10 PC with 4GB of RAM and uh, the integrated Intel HD uh, graphics card. Since I'm not really using this PC to edit the 4K videos and I'm only really using it to stitch the videos and photos together, um, hopefully this might do okay. So enough of me talking right now, and trust me, there's a lot more I want to say right now, but I'm gonna talk through it while we actually walk through the steps that I go about in getting videos off the camera, stitching, and then getting ready for editing. So first we'll be using the Samsung Action Director on an i5 Windows PC. This isn't actually part of my workflow, but I thought it would be good to run through this process to show you what Samsung Action Director is, and also to set a baseline on the stitching process that we go through. So we've got Action Director open on screen now, and to start stitching an image or video, you simply find your videos on your uh, on the desktop, on your folders, on your drive, simply drag it in and it'll start the stitching process straight away. Um, so there you go, I've dragged an image and a video in, so hopefully they'll come up on the, on the little, yep, window there and it has and on the bottom right hand corner of those thumbnails you actually see a um, little percentage signs uh, amount um, showing you how far it's processed uh, in stitching the video or photo together so as you can tell the photo which is the one on the right hand side is basically stitched immediately it didn't take any time and it's slowly processing through the um, the video right now which is the one on the left hand side there uh, which I've got selected um, so for the purpose of the testing here, I've created a 20 second um, 360 4K video which I'll be using um, in the three method of stitching that I'll show you and walk through with you. Um, and also just an image, um, the image is a the yeah, full high res image, the 25 megabyte uh, megapixel image. Um, and we'll have a quick look at how fast or how it goes in stitching that together as well. So as you can see, it's taking its time. It's only processed, what, 15 or 17% now. I might just fast forward this bit a little bit here and then um, go to the end and we'll talk through it a little bit more. So the footage you're watching right now is actually um, fast forwarded by 800%. Um, I can actually tell you how long it eventually took to stitch this 20 second uh, 364K video. It took Action Director actually five minutes and 22 seconds to uh, complete the stitching. Um, so it's actually it took quite a long time for a, uh, a relatively short 20 second video. Um, admittedly, um, I'm using an i5 machine uh, with only 4 gigabyte and a pretty standard uh, integrated Intel HD graphics card. But I was still hoping the performance to be much better than this. Um, it will be good to find out, uh, I'm going to try to borrow one or if any of you that has one. Uh, a processor which is a little bit faster and i7 will be good with 8 gig of RAM um, and a better graphics card and see what kind of performance you can get out but for the performance I'm getting from a relatively new computer not the highest end but not the lowest end either um, it's, a, it's not a bad performer as a desktop uh, as, as, a, as a laptop by itself um, it took yeah over five minutes five minutes and 22 seconds to process a 20 second 360 degrees video 
So the progress bar have disappeared from the thumbnail, which means the stitching have finished. So we'll have a quick look at the file and see what file size and what uh, what rename it to be. The original file name of uh, any media on the uh, Gi360 always start with 360 underscore, and then it'll uh, have ending with whatever sequential numbers up to. Uh, so in our case, it's 360 underscore 0145 .mp4. The output from Action Director have the same format, but it'll add on an underscore stitch underscore xhc. See? Uh, the original file form uh, file size was 78.8 megabytes and the stitch file from Action Director is 82.3 megabytes. So the second method that we'll use to stitch our photos or videos together is by directly saving the file from the Key360 to the Samsung mobile phone. All you have to do is open up Key360 Manager, browse for the file you want on the device and hit the save button. What it will do is it will basically stitch and save the file that you selected onto your phone. Uh, it will pop up with a little save icon with the phone on the top left hand corner of, uh, of the interface. And, uh, and basically once that's done, your stitch file is saved to your mobile phone. So we've done that with a photo here. It probably took a little bit longer than what Action Director did, but remember this does both stitching and copying the file onto the phone. So we'll do the stitching for the 20 second video clip that we did under Action Director. Um, so you go into Key360 Manager, again, you find the file that you want on the Key360 itself, hit the save button and it will start saving the video to your device. Um, as you can see, the first 30% or so, it goes pretty quickly. I found that to be the case with um, bigger files as well. Um, but then it will slow down now as it's starting to process the stitching process um, as well as copying it to your device. What I found with this process is that when you save the file where there's a photo or video from the device directly to your phone, um, it will automatically stitch it. Um, and will only copy the stitch file onto your phone. So if you want to keep the original file as the original file format that is on the Gi360, make sure you do a backup directly from the SD card or directly from the Gi360 um, so that you don't lose that original unstitched file. Um, as the file that you get from the phone after you're saving it down to your phone is the stitch version only. The file name on the stitch um, file on the phone, it does change the file name a little bit. Remember the original file is 360 underscore and the file number and in this case it's 0145.mp4. Um, the stitch file will always start with SAM for Samsung I assume so it will be SAM underscore 100 underscore 0145.mp4. Um, so it, it will rename it so if you do make a backup of the original and a copy of this and copy it down from your phone you won't write over each other and you won't get confused between the stitch file and the um in the original file itself so which is a good thing as you can see on the screen we're 83 percent through the processing of this stitch file and copying it to the phone um, i can tell you the final time it takes to stitch this file to get a copying um, directly via bluetooth um, took two minutes and one second so which is um half the time it took uh, compared to Action Director, which took over 5 minutes and 22 seconds. Remember though, the PC I used with Action Director was an i5 and not the recommended i7, um, but I was still amazed at how slow that was. Um, so as you can see, it's stitched, it's got an icon showing that it's safe to um, the phone itself. A good way to check to make sure this has worked is just to open up the file again and you'll notice that it opens up straight away, it doesn't require stitching, there's no delay, um, so that's because the file is that is open is already a stitch file and doesn't require any more processing. Um, this has been my workflow for a little while and it's actually proven to be quite good. The issue I had with this uh, method is that if the file is too big, sometimes you do get drop out on the Bluetooth and also every now and then the uh, app will crash itself. So in searching for a better workflow, I wonder what would happen if you actually copy the file directly from the SD card onto the phone uh, via your computer. So um, what I found out is when you open the uh, phone directory, you see that in the photos directory, the DCIM directory, um, there's a G360 directory too, which is where it keeps all the safe um, images that you save down from the G360 onto the phone. Um, so I literally just copy the original SD card file, um, the 360 underscore 0145 in this case, um, into this folder. So you open Key360 Manager on your phone, you'll actually see the unstitch uh, photo or video thumbnail in the mobile device section of the app. 
So we'll open up the 360 unstitch image first and you'll see that it'll come up with the um, two fish eye image um, showing that it's unstitched and this is a raw file from the camera and if you actually touch the 360 image it will now stitch the image together and it will output as a 360 stitch uh, image that you would normally get when you uh, download from the phone um, but when you actually exit back out it'll still show the um, original raw image the thumbnail will still show the or original raw image but the best way to again to test whether this is actually a stitch image or not if you go back in again you tap on it um, it doesn't require any time for stitching it goes straight back in the image um, so we can now try the same process for the video and, um, and see how it goes and whether it will work the same way so we'll find the 20 second video that we are using for the purpose of this test we'll tap into it you'll see that it's um, the two three again uh, and then when you touch on the 360 again it will start a stitching process um, so this is going to go through uh, and take its time to stitch again remember this time we aren't copying the file from the 360 so there's no bluetooth connection involved um, in fact my 360 camera is not even turned on um, and it's basically the phone just stitching this image um, directly from the SD card I can tell you now that the time it takes to stitch this file from the SD card is uh, a minute 56 which is around 5 or 6 seconds faster than um, stitching via Bluetooth from the Gear 360 and it's almost three and a half minutes faster than uh, converting via Action Director using an i5 processor. I would love to get my hands on a Windows PC that meets the Samsung requirements for using Action Director and just to see how much faster it will perform. If any of you guys are using a computer with the recommended specs or higher, I would love to find out um, how long it would take for you guys to process the 20 second videos and stitch it using Action Director. So let's see, this video is still converting, it's around 60% now. Um, I can tell you that the file size that it generated is 158 megabyte, which is the same as the, uh, the file that was generated from stitching via Bluetooth from the 360, uh, Gear 360. Um, and it's a lot higher than the Action Director conversion, which is only 82 megabytes. So the Action Director obviously does compress it a lot more after the conversion whereas the phone does not do that compression and leaving the file size to be pretty much double the size so if space is important to you then um, you may prefer conversion via action director um, but in my case i don't really have a choice because we don't use pcs so and in some ways the speed is much more important from my point of view but even taking two minutes to convert a, a quick 20 second video file is actually really slow and I can imagine it being a pain. In fact, it is already being a pain because I've been out and taking 10, 15 minutes videos, multiples of them, coming back and trying to convert them and it's literally taking all night. The main reason why I prefer this method of stitching over the second method where we um, stitch directly with the Gear 360 via Bluetooth is that this method tends to be a little bit more stable whereas the second one I, I've experienced a few times where the Bluetooth have dropped out or my Gear 360 have ran out of battery and I have to quickly find a power source and um, I made the mistake of plugging into the, uh, onto my Mac and it actually stopped the connection straight away. Um, in both instances where in both methods I've had the um, Gear 360 Manager app crashed on me midway through a conversion, so that's maybe unavoidable sometimes. Looking on the screen now, one thing I did forget to mention is that the file name um, with this conversion method, it actually doesn't convert the file name to the um, SAM underscore format, so it actually just writes over the existing 360 underscore format. So if you want to keep the original unstitched file, you just got to be a little bit careful um, not to write over it when you copy it back down to your PC. So which method should I use? And I suppose the answer to that is it depends. If you're running a Windows environment and you've got a really fast computer and fast processor, there's no reason why you shouldn't be using Action Director. It's good for when you have a lot of files that are converted in a batch, and also the output file size is a lot smaller than the other two methods. However, this could be painfully slow if you're running on a slower PC, and if you're not on PC at all, then it's not an option for you. The Bluetooth method is great when you're only converting a few small files. However, the connection issues and the crashing of the Gear 360 Manager app um, just make it a little bit too unstable for my liking and that's why I've stopped using this method. This last method is the one that I've been mainly using for my workflow. Um, it is fast and a lot more stable than the Bluetooth method and um, especially when you're uh, converting and stitching bigger files and longer videos. Um, however, it is a little bit messier than the Bluetooth method because you need to copy the files out from the camera and then uh, copy it onto the phone. 
um, and of course we're going to copy it out again so it does have its disadvantages as well but for my needs this is probably the best method for me until Action Director is supported for Mac OS or if I have a Windows PC they can get Action Director to stitch files as fast as I can um, on the phone Finally, what I've got here for you is a comparison between the speed in Action Director on the PC on the i5, uh, stitching a file which is 3 minutes 40 seconds long and it's 850 megabytes in size. Uh, compare that to the stitching on the phone via the SD card method. Um, and this video I actually will fast forward from here onwards because it's going to take a little while to run. Uh, in fact, I'll tell you the time now. Um, it took over 35 minutes for the stitching to complete on uh, using Action Director. Um, it failed to complete twice uh, via the Bluetooth method um, because either I had connections issue or it dropped out or it crashed or one way or another. Um, it actually crashed on the SD card method as well once while I'm recording this video so if you're watching it through you actually see it crashing through and I will start again so that's why by the end of the video it looks like they finish around the same time but the SD card method actually finished in 19 minutes um, so if you actually think about it it actually takes a long time to stitch a 3 minutes 46 well say 4 minutes video it took 20 minutes almost 20 minutes for the SD card method in the S7 to uh, stitch the video file and it took over 35 minutes for Action Director um, Again, I would love to hear from you guys uh, to let me know how Action Director Runs whether it runs a lot faster for you using an i7 processor using a, uh, a bit more RAM or a much faster graphics card Whether my computer is too slow and I, I just need to get access to another one I hope you guys all enjoyed the video and got something out from it um, so please subscribe and comment and let me know what you think, um, let me know what you want me to talk about next or look into your tests for you or if there's anything you really want to see me shoot in 360, hopefully in the next week or so I'll, I'll be able to produce more 360 videos to put up on the YouTube channels um, and we'll talk about editing uh, 360 videos in the future as well. So again please subscribe, hope you all enjoyed and I'll catch you next time.